In this lesson, we will formulate the Chazy equation and compare it to the Darcy Weisbeck equation. Antoine de Chazy was a French hydraulic engineer who was commissioned to design a water supply system using a nearby river, the Yvette River. He was set to determine the relationship between the channel geometry and the river velocity. However, there was no literature at the time that gave this relationship, so he made his own analysis. In his analysis, he found that the velocity was proportional to the square root of the hydraulic radius and the channel slope. His formulation gave us what we now call the Chazy equation. In this equation, the term C is a factor of proportionality that relates or changes from channel to channel. The S value is the longitudinal slope, which we will discuss later in this section, and the R value is the hydraulic radius which we already know is the ratio of the flow area to its wetted perimeter. In order to understand how the Chessy equation works and relates to friction, let's look at how the darcy weisbeck equation applies on open channel flow. Let's consider a steady, uniform open channel with a constant cross-section, as shown in the figure. If we want to apply the energy equation for steady uniform flow, we can set our inlet control surface on the left as number one and our outlet control surface on the right as number two. In this system, we have no pumps or turbines, so we can eliminate those terms from the equation. Also, remember that for channels with little to no vertical acceleration, we can take the change in pressure along the vertical axis as equal to a hydrostatic change in pressure. This means that at any two points in the control surfaces, the pressures should be the same and there should be no variation between the upstream pressure and the downstream pressure. This means that we can cancel out the pressure from this equation. Similarly, if our cross section is uniform, then there should be no change in velocity from the upstream control surface to the downstream control surface, so we can cancel out the velocity from this term. This leaves us with an equation of head loss as a function of the elevations of the control surfaces. We can call the change in elevations delta z. In the image, which I got from Hibbler's book, they call it delta y. The right triangle formed between the datum and the channel bottom can be analyzed as follows change in elevation delta z can be taken to be equal to the length of the channel bottom times the sine of the angle of inclination of the channel bottom. We can define the longitudinal slope s or s naught in the figure as the change between the elevation and the horizontal direction delta z over delta x. Looking at this right triangle we see that delta z over delta x is also equal to the tangent of the angle of inclination. Most flows in nature, or most channels in nature, have very small angles, much smaller than 10 degrees. We can say that the sine of an angle is approximately equal to that angle. We can approximate the cosine of the angle to 1 minus the angle squared over 2. We can approximate the tangent of the angle to that angle. Notice that this lets us imply that the sine of the angle can be approximated to the tangent of the angle. In our case, since the longitudinal slope is equal to the tangent of the angle of inclination, we can approximate this to be the sine of the angle of inclination. We can now write this back into our geometric equations to say that the change in elevation is equal to the product of the length times the longitudinal slope. We can now write this back into the energy equation to say that the head loss is equal to the product of the channel length times its longitudinal slope. Since we have no minor loss components in this figure, then the head losses will be equal to only the friction losses. And the friction losses can be approximated using the darcy weisbeck equation. Here, since we're not dealing with a circular conduit, we will be using 4 times the hydraulic radius in place of the diameter. With this formulation, we can now solve for velocity and get the following expression. Notice that the lengths cancel out, which means that as long as the cross-section geometry does not change, the velocity will not depend on the length of that reach. 
we can further rewrite this velocity expression into two terms, the product of a square root of 8 times gravitational acceleration over friction factor times the square root of the hydraulic radius times the longitudinal slope. We write this expression in this way so that we can compare it to the Chessy equation. The Chessy equation multiplies a coefficient c by the square root of the hydraulic radius times the longitudinal slope. Comparing both equations, we can deduce that this coefficient c is equal to the square root of 8 times gravitational acceleration over friction factor. We typically call this coefficient the Chessy coefficient. Now, Chessy did not propose a method of calculating the c coefficient. Instead, he used it as a way to relate the geometric and flow properties of one channel to another. However, if we can compare the darcy weisbach equation to the Chessy equation, we can relate the Chessy coefficient to the friction factor, which in turn is a function of the flow and the channel roughness. This can lead us to conclude that the Chessy coefficient should be a function of the flow properties and of the channel roughness. Chessy's equation was originally applied for an open channel, but later he applied it to pipe flow, taking that the hydraulic radius, which is equal to the ratio of the area of a pipe to its wetted perimeter, was equal to the diameter over 4. Chessy's formulation had very little impact during his lifetime, and even in the early decades after his death. His proposed design was not accepted at first, and after some resistance, when he was finally given permission to construct, his construction was not finished due to the French Revolution. However, his equation was the first and the longest lasting flow resistance formula. It was a precursor to the Darcy-Weisbach equation and to the Manning equation, which we will cover later.